that was my uh, one and only nectarine that I managed to grow on my uh, new nectarine tree and um, yeah the hens enjoyed it <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna eat a nectarine I don't think I like I, th I think I had one last year I didn't enjoy it at all and um, yeah the only thing about only thing about videoing the neighbors hens is that sometimes <laughs> sometimes you might just get the timing a little bit wrong Bonjour! <laughs> uh, you pull it, you do pull it? And in the troisième! Oh! And the quick! Oui, oh, oui! And the quick, you can't! Yeah, I'm guessing that lady's thinking, why on earth? <laughs> why on earth are you recording my chickens, you weirdo? <laughs> So it was a, a chilly morning actually this morning although quite bright a bit misty about 10 or 11 degrees so fairly chilly as i said um yeah i did happen to spot a um a little doo-doo on my uh, patio uh, which kind of tells me that there's a hedgehog wandering around the garden of a night time which i think is absolutely fantastic obviously didn't get the memo about pooing on the patio so if you've been uh, watching my channel for a while you'll know that this area didn't really look like this when I uh, first arrived. It was a, a bit of a disaster zone, and uh, I had to, I had to dig up all this area here uh, to put in some drainage, and uh, yeah, it kind of left a bit of a mess. So uh, I did go to some effort to put in a, um, a flower bed. Uh, didn't really know what I was doing, if I'm honest, because didn't really know what the temperatures were going to be like, and uh, yeah, how the summers were going to be and how the winters were going to be. But I knew this was kind of a shady area and uh yeah so what i thought i'd do is just run through what's in here and um yeah show you what's what so one of the first things i did um, when i arrived was um i had some old cast iron pots and uh, i thought it'd be a good idea to paint them in black hammerite which they did look really really nice and they still do look really really nice but the problem with black cast iron is it gets absolutely scorching hot and the soil temperatures in there uh, on a hot day when it gets up to 35 or 40 degrees must be off the charts uh, and the only thing that seems to survive are geraniums so I'm gonna have to make a note so yeah this video is really to help me uh, take some notes uh, to see what I should be doing uh, next season and uh, yeah maybe it will help you out as well so what I do I'll start at this end and work my way along so one of my favorite plants in the garden is uh, osteospermin and uh, yeah that's not done particularly well there but um, yeah this soil could probably do with some improving I've got a hydrangea at the back there which I'm fairly sure was quite expensive and uh, it's not doing particularly well it is a bit of a mess this is a bit of a rough area at the back here because I've got this hedge which is kind of filled with birds uh, for quite a lot of the year and uh, so I'm loath to spend too much time trimming it although I do give it a light trim now and then uh, yeah, so hydrangea, more geraniums in there. That down there is a Pitosporum tom thumb. I bought that because I think it's really nice. The dark leaves, really, really interesting. And I've got being squashed by a rosemary is a, a lavender. And uh, yeah, this this rosemary, this is this is not good. This rosemary, um, not exactly sure what's going on. That actually used to live by the house. Yeah, I've got a bit of a habit of moving plants and I'm thinking between now and next spring a lot of these plants are going to get moved and maybe, uh, you know, made smaller and uh, yes, just to try and get on top of it because some things are just completely out of control. Yeah, like this rosemary, uh, which seems to be not well. Some of it looks in perfect condition, some of it looks okay and some of it looks, well, kind of dead and I know that um, rosemary does like the heat. I do have a, a cast iron pot in the back there that has got still got some winter pansies or spring pansies if you like they've been going for months and months and months and I did head them regularly. Behind this rosemary is a Wygela and yeah I've got three of these and that actually used to be long where my uh, gazebo is or pergola 
whatever you like. Uh, and yeah, that was in the sun and uh, it got completely scorched. So that's done quite well since I've moved it and it's probably getting some protection from the uh, rosemary, by the rosemary. Uh, down there is a dahlia and uh, yeah, I do try and deadhead that as well actually. And that's quite nice. I do like dahlias. They do tend to be a bit expensive though. Are they expensive where you are? Uh, at the back there, I've got uh, a buddleia and that's not done. I did move that. I moved that about, that about two feet and moved it back when I was rejigging this, re this area earlier in the year. And it's done okay, it hasn't been fantastic. I've got another one. I had a matching pair and the other one that I hadn't moved this year did better. Uh, down here, I've got a lavender which has just collapsed. And yeah, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's crushing I'm sure it's crushing something underneath there. Uh, that there is the other Wygela, uh, second of three that I've got. Uh, seems to be happier there. And I've got another Osteospermum there. And yeah, that needs deadheading by the look of it, but I really like that and I'm kind of hoping that's gonna get nice and big. Something that does really, really well in France and you see them all over the place around here is Red Robins, Photinia Red Robin. And yeah, they love, they love all the weather. No matter how good it is, how bad it is, how hot it is, they absolutely love it. Uh, down here, these are a type of lily. I can't remember the type of lily that that is actually, but that's done really well. That was a maroon flower. And uh, yeah, that's gone over now. Uh, something that's having a bad time is um, the hookera. Yeah, this poor fella has been absolutely toasted by the sun, uh, even though it is kind of shaded to a degree by something else next to it. It's not done very well there. And uh, it's probably a thirstier plant than I, than, I, uh, than I imagined it would be. This is one of my favorite plants. Uh, this is a salvia hot lips and yeah, the bees and the bugs absolutely, absolutely love it. And it's been in flower for months and months and months. And yeah, I'm gonna try and get myself another one or two of these because oh, they just think they're fantastic. And I've got a resident black bee um, yeah, he's always floating around that fella. And behind that, I've got another YG. That's the third of the YG. And uh, yeah, that's doing okay back there. Uh, down here, I've got uh, an oleander, which is kind of in flower. Not particularly convincing, but um, yeah, it's doing okay. Doesn't like the frost. I don't know what this is, if anyone knows what this is. I was given some plants at the beginning of the year. And uh, this one's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm guessing it's gonna burst into flower at some point. If anyone knows what it is, put it in the comments for me. Now, let's talk about this fella. <laughs> let's talk about this fella. Uh, in between everything, uh, having a really bad time and looks kind of toasted. I'm not even sure it's still alive. Now, <laughs> now some of you, at the time I moved it, some of you said, no, that's no good. That's not going to survive. And I did and I did have it surviving for quite a while. But yeah, that peony that's kind of toasted did actually belong or live next to the house for years and years and years. And uh, I kind of split it up and I moved it into this bed and I was quite chuffed with myself. And uh, it's just too hot. I mean, even though it's only 22 degrees now, uh, it's the sun is really, really strong, really, really strong. And as I say, it's going to get up to 30 degrees this week and it gets up to 40 degrees here every summer. Uh, so I'm going to have to have a bit of a rethink on a lot of these plants. So down here, I've got a couple of euonymus and they were just like off cuts um, that came off of a, a huge euonymus that I've got on the other side of the garden and I just stuck them in the ground and they're still alive. Down there is a, if I get in the way of the uh, shot, is a begonia, and that flower that you can see there is actually um, a sweet pea that's found its way through the bed. But yeah, that begonia, that should get really big. That's called elephant's ears, and I really like those. Uh, in the corner is, I think that is a skimmia, and that doesn't seem to be doing too well. It's a little bit scruffy, this area. Um, there's some nettles and some brambles trying to trying to find their way into the bed. Uh, down there, not quite sure what that is down there. That might be an Agapanthus actually. That needs to be more in the sun. So that's in too much a shade. And growing up this little fence that I built uh, is a honeysuckle and that's called, I think it's called Fragrantissima. And yeah, absolutely beautifully fragrant in the springtime. 
So just quickly, I've got to show you something in the kitchen. I'll show you at the end of the video. Um, so right, yeah, over here is the new flower bed that I dug back in April. Uh, and yeah, some things are doing okay, but I think it's because it's, it's dead in the middle of the garden and it's in the sun all year. Uh, yeah, all year long, it's in the sun, doesn't get any shade at any point during the day really. And I think that's gonna, yeah, I think that's not gonna be great for it. So yeah, down here, the first thing I've got, I planted it at the end here, is a Ceanothus. Now that should get to about five or six feet tall, hopefully. And uh, yeah, I like that. That's one of, one of my favorites. Uh, I can't think of what that's called, if anyone knows what that is called. It's got a, a mauve flower on it. And I think, that's a hyacinth, isn't it? Aren't they hyacinths? Yeah, anyway. They were some perennials that I picked up in the uh, uh, DIY store back at the beginning of the year. And that is, that's a euonymus. Is that called emerald and gold? Can't remember. Uh, there is a hookera down there, which is doing slightly better than the uh, other one on the other side of the garden. That's all been toasted. And what did really, really well this year, I had about 20 of them, uh, foxgloves, all grown from seed. So that was quite satisfying to actually uh, grow something from seed. And I've sown more seeds in these uh, beds and hopefully I won't weed them out. That's my worst, that's my worst habit sometimes is over weeding and you end up with an empty bed. There is a dogwood uh, cornus. Don't know exactly what one it is, but yeah, that should grow to about five or six feet as well. Uh, down there, I think that's, is it Montbretia? Uh, I think that's called Lucifer, if I remember rightly. And uh, yeah, that's one of my favorites as well. Didn't do much this year, first year in the ground. It's kind of being swamped by spurge. So I do need to get in here and do some weeding. But yeah, weeding is not something I do when it's, uh, when it's 80 degrees. And this here, this here is what's left of a pear tree do you remember I did this little project when I put this um, flower bed together where I had to I had to cut this pear tree down which had, well, had fallen over and it had fallen against the fence and I had to cut it down and there was a bit left that's kind of sticking up there and I did actually say at the time that if the pears were no good I was going to get rid of it so there is maybe I don't know two or three pears on it and let's have a look can I zoom in on that um yeah they're kind they're kind of they're kind of awful um i'm not going to eat them and maybe well, maybe there's a few more actually i can see a few at the top so yeah they're probably they probably is it probably is about maybe 10 10 or 12 on there uh, but i'll end up chopping them up and giving them to uh, giving them to the chickens but yeah not really sure what to do about this but it does give the garden a little bit of interest a little bit of height uh, and at the bottom of that, there's a, a holly, which I don't like, do not like holly in the garden at all. Uh, yeah, as a, I'm a bit of a keen weeder. He says that looking at all these weeds with uh, yellow flowers on. Yeah, yeah, finding old holly leaves while you're weeding is uh, not great. Uh, that there is a spiraea. Had to look at the label. I do often leave the labels on plants because my memory is terrible. But yeah, that's a spiraea, and that could probably be out in the sun a little bit more. Uh, down there is another hookera, uh, which is doing much, much better than the others. That does get a little bit of shade, plus it's not maroon color, it's a green one, so maybe that prefers the hot conditions. There is a cotinus. Yeah, I did enjoy, I did enjoy planting this out, and there's so much space. Um, still to be planted but yeah I planted that when did I plant I planted that uh, in April I think or maybe the last week in April that katina so hopefully that will get to about 10 or 12 feet tall and so obviously once that grows up I'll be able to get rid of this pear tree perhaps any ideas leave a comment uh, that there is a Nandina that should get to about three or four feet I think I quite like them as well quite a nice structural plant now this here, well, it's still alive, barely. It's got one or two pathetic flowers on it. This was a, a hydrangea that I was given. I was given quite a few plants around April time. And uh, yeah, hydrangeas in this, in this weather, no good, really. I need to find a shady spot for all the hydrangeas. And um, 
Yeah, I've got another one I'll show you in a second. This here is a Photinia, which is one of the first plants I ever put in the garden when I first bought the house. So that hasn't really grown much. I'm guessing that's been there about five years. And uh, yeah, that's not even three feet tall. And that should get to, that should get to about 10 feet tall, I think. Eight or 10 feet tall. Uh, not sure what this is. Yeah, not sure what that is. That's exactly the same as that plant on the other side of the garden that I need identifying. And down there <laughs> is another, another pathetic hydrangea. Yeah, it's just too hot for hydrangeas, but this one is definitely alive and I do keep giving it uh, drinks. What did I miss? I missed something over here. Oh, Penstemon. Yeah, the Penstemon I missed and I absolutely love them and I'd like more of them in the garden. Yeah, so really I need to be, I need to be thinking about another place for a flower bed. And over here, this gets a lot more shade and I think this would be a much better place along, along that hedge there would be a better place to put hydrangeas, I think. Although in the afternoon, after about three or four o'clock, this is not in the shade. So yeah, maybe I need to, um, maybe I need to put a fence in somewhere across the garden um, or maybe a row of red robins like what I've got. I've got a row of, red, row of red robins at the back there. So yeah, a bit of a tour of the flower beds. What do you think? A bit of an unusual video for me to make, but I thought it will keep me out of trouble. It will um, it will stop me from taking walls down in the house. Um, although there is something I want to show you in the kitchen. I do have a couple of other plants out there. I've got a five or six hibiscus to go in the ground that someone gave me and a camellia. So not really sure where they can go. Maybe I could put them in the orchard. Anyway, leave me some comments below. Yeah, let me know what you know about the plants that I've got. Any advice, always appreciated. So yeah, I was given something. I was given something. There are some friendly people here in France. Not many, not many, but um, I was given something that um, is really gonna help me out. Yes, I have acquired a new fridge with a freezer. And uh, yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna make life much better than I can replace my um, little fridge that's only got a freezer box in it. So yeah, I can actually store, start storing more food. So yeah, bit of an unusual video for me today, uh, but it'll keep me out of trouble, won't it? Hope all is well. See you later.